Record. Hey everybody, welcome to week four. Yeah, week four of uh, contemporary software development here at Portland State University. Um, this is a, an exciting night because we're going to be doing pair programming tonight and in person too. So uh, thank you to everybody who came tonight. Um, I know it's probably not convenient to be down here. I know it's getting dark early. It's not raining too hard. Um, but I think it's really important to be able to experience pair programming live with a person and we'll talk about um, uh, you know options for the next couple of weeks look like but we're doing that tonight but uh, let's see here to get started we'll do some prime minister's questions then we'll talk about pair programming um, both sort of how it's done we'll uh, do two activities one will be pair programming with me so you can sort of see how it's done then uh, we'll have an opportunity to pair program as, as pairs and then we will talk about project four and that'll be it probably another full night tonight, um, but lots of good stuff and uh, lots of hopefully things that are engaging and uh, and uh, gives you, you know, an opportunity to interact more in class as opposed to just you know, listening to me talk about job stuff. Um, so to get us all started, um, what can I tell you? Uh, project one was due tonight. Uh, how did it go? What do you think? Any uh, feedback, observations, questions, ideas that you'd like to share? Okay, good one. What were some things that uh, either you found in the reading or things that maybe that weren't in the reading that you had to find out on your own? Okay, well, the day class wasn't a requirement for project one, but it, it is, I think some people found out, okay, it makes things a little easier to use the day class. Um, it's a little bit more, yeah, learning up front as opposed to like in project day three is where it shows up. What are your thoughts on project one? Yeah, so yeah, so you had to tell uh, Maven to use Java 11. Yeah, yeah and that was one of the PS2 machines, or was that on your personal machine also? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I wouldn't. So I think, did anybody else have problems running on the PSU machines when this compile? Oh, the one to read me? Yeah. Yeah, that was an interesting one. It was the, the file name was case sensitive on some platforms. Okay, yeah, and so then, yeah, I don't, I don't know if that was unique to your environment, but you know, we made readme all uppercase it seemed to work everywhere. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, you know, for project one, the uh, you know the main logic uh, is there in the command line parsing, and yeah, it sounds like the journey that you went on is one that I've heard a number of students go on, where you know initially they think, okay, great, I have to accommodate you know exactly this many arguments. Oh, but wait, but wait, the the options are optional, and how do I do that in terms of number checking? Um, and yeah, it gets complicated. Because uh, there is a, a lot of different options there, and then it sounds like yeah, you write you arrange that loop, and you know it might feel goofy. It's probably the right thing to do. Because um, I don't, and I hope it will serve you well. Because in projects two and three, there are more options, and actually in project three, the format of command line, the dates of the command line changes, and uh, you have like a time zone and things like that. So it's yeah. So I think you'll find that the for loop is actually more flexible um, down the line, even though uh, for project one it might seem kind of awkward and then over the back to that Uh how are the cones coming? People finishing those up? We're doing, I don't know, a couple of weeks. Yep, a couple more weeks, but you also have projects two and three coming on. So um, how have you found them in terms of helping you learn the language? Has it been effective? Are you able to I think things seem a little more familiar to you? 
because of the cones, or yeah, I'm seeing some heads nodding and stuff. I think we good. Mm -hmm. um, has anybody had a chance to break ground on Project 2 yet, or uh, at least looked at it? Any questions there? Hope you find it. Yeah. Uh, Project 2 is due on the 7th. That is, yeah, that is next week. So, yep, yeah, please uh, get started on it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, right now we got a lot in progress. Uh, you know, boy, that second week of class, I was thinking about it. I was like, ah, it really messed things up, you know, the flow and how things go from uh, from week to week. And so then, uh, you know, hey, if you're feeling a little disoriented or uh, if, you, if you're worried about catching up, um, you know, focus. I guess the best thing to do is to ask questions when you have them. Uh, when I know it can be tough because it's hard to, you know, when it's something that you're not familiar with, how do you articulate, um, you know, what you should ask? Actually, on that, um, what I found to be effective when it comes to asking questions is uh, stating sort of like, here's what I did, here's what I expected, and here's what I got, and saying, hey, I don't understand why what I got doesn't meet my expectations. Because sometimes it's like, oh, yeah, right. It, did the right thing and your expectations were off, but also sometimes it's like, oh no, you know, your expectation was right and here's why you didn't get the result. Um, so if you're kind of ever wondering, you know, hey, how do I structure my question or how do I turn to what I'm seeing and all these things floating around in my head into something that I can you know, articulate and engage with somebody in a technique that I use um, that I find to be helpful. Um, but yeah, but yeah, looking ahead, um, yeah, next week, Project due, 2 is due, and then the, uh, the cones after that, and then Project 3 after that. Um, try to spread things out a little bit more over the term. Uh, so then, yeah, I think the next order of business uh, is Project 2 for everybody. And uh, I think that will be interesting because you're writing to a file, and so therefore, um, like your tests and things like that um, might have to deal with the side effects of writing to files and uh, good stuff like that. Yeah, let me know how that goes. Okay. Um, other, um, other questions? Other questions, anything else can answer um, about anything in the course so far or coming up? Oh, okay. Cool. Let's dive into it then. Okay. Um, tonight, it's all about pair programming. And I prepared this, uh, I don't know, handout, Google Doc uh, for everybody. I'll post it again in Slack. Um, uh, here's the handout. Oops. Handout for tonight. Oh, and let me open it up. Actually, does this thing need to edit? Oh, yeah, yeah, we will at the end. So I'll make it editable here. And um, anyone with the link can edit. Okay, so uh, pair programming with test driven development. So last week, um, we learned about and got to experience test driven development, right? Where we focus, where we focus on capabilities that you want to you know, bring into creation through your, through your program. And um, expressing those capabilities and your expectations for those capabilities in tests before ultimately implementing those tests and implementing the code that makes those tests pass, right? That red, green, with backwards cycle. And, uh, and so then, you know, we got to see that, you got to see that uh, last week. Um, we got to you know, interact with you brainstorming test cases. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and then you got to explore uh, writing unit tests and maybe even doing test driven development on your own with your projects. Um, but tonight we're going to add uh, another technique from contemporary software development into the mix, and that's pair programming. Um, and so then I hope you uh, all had a chance to review the pair programming lecture that I have up on YouTube and sort of talked about some of the um, uh, you know, fundamental concepts and some more things about the roles. Uh, that you play. I'll review a little bit of that tonight, but we'll have an opportunity to put all that into practice. So uh, 
we're going to do uh, two activities tonight. The first one will uh, be 45 minutes pairing with me. I'll ask for volunteers from the audience uh, to come up, people that uh, are, are comfortable to be in front of the class and, and coding with me and, and talking through all this stuff. Um, we'll be doing uh, we'll do we'll do a couple of what are called code katas. Um, these are very simple programs that are uh, you know which are all about teaching you a concept. Um, and in this case, we're, we're teaching ourselves pair programming. We'll do um, we'll first use the uh, the FizzBuzz kata, which maybe some of you have heard of. Um, and then uh, after we do a, a quick uh, a set of pair programming, a couple of uh, a few rounds of that. Um, then uh, we will spend an hour or so uh, breaking out into a pair, as I said, breakout rooms, because I think it's last year we were doing it on Zoom. Um, but here uh, we'll do it uh, in person, uh, pairing up, and okay, well, we've got an odd number of people tonight, so uh, it's okay. Either someone can pair with me, or we have a trio, no problem, um, to uh, perform or, or to work on a simple leap year kata. Um, and uh, there are going to be three pair programming activities this term, uh, this week, next week, and the week after that. And between the, 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 the two kata exercises, I'll talk more about the expectations for pair programming and how you can and what you need to do for the other two sessions. Now, um, so before we get started, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I created a, a GitHub repository called Portland State Java Katas winter 2024 and I'll open that now um, like you to uh, open it up to this is where we'll be working so uh, a very common way to uh, uh, share code when uh, when pairing especially when pairing remotely uh, is to have uh, the person who is driving uh, the person who's typing on the keyboard uh, commit their code to to github uh, push it up there and then have then when the pairs rotate uh, roles, then the new driver simply does a pull to get the changes. And I found this works pretty well in, uh, in a classroom setting. Um, the first few times I did this, I had everybody create their own repositories, and that ended up being like half an hour and stuff. Because we basically had to redo all that stuff we did in the first day. It's like, I don't know, it would be easier uh, if we do this. Um, however, um, I would like uh, everybody to uh, have, well, everybody needs to have push access to this. Um, and so then, um, if you haven't already, and let me just see here, the collaborators here. Um, oh, too fat off in the future. I don't feel any more secure. I feel a little annoyed. Um, oops. Oh, I should probably do this off. Uh, don't steal my GitHub code. There it is. <laughs> Really Let's see here. I have six people who are collaborators. One person still has an invitation. Um, so with, yeah, John still has an invitation out. So check your email, John, for an invitation from me inviting you to this repository. Um, if you don't see your name up here, please DM me on uh, or whatever. You know, let me know uh, via Slack and I'll add you um, here shortly. But yeah, this will let everybody um, uh, push uh, to, the, to the repository. Yes. Okay. Um, so then we'll be using uh, this repository. So please uh, get a checkout uh, for it, you know, sort of here in the background. Um, while uh, while I'm talking, so make a checkout and uh, make sure you can uh, build it. It's it's exactly the same as the repository that we created here on week one. Um, let's see here. So yeah, so if the background, you could please get a you know make a clone of it. Uh, make sure Maven W Clean Verify works for you. It'll build a lot of stuff because it's got a bunch of projects in there, um, but it should be okay. Um, and yeah, and please uh, let me know what your GitHub ID is if you don't have push access to it. Um, oh yeah, I just just point out that uh, not only does this help us pair program, but it also helps us experience what happens when a bunch of people commit to a shared repository all at the same time. Um, who knows what might happen? Uh, just you know, be careful, or rather, just sort of be open or be graceful if someone uh, you know pushes a change that breaks a whole bunch of stuff. Been known to happen, um, but uh, we can fix it here pretty quickly. Not a big deal. Okay. 
So I just wanted to give a quick overview of what pair programming is all about in case it's been a little while since, uh, uh, since you watched the, the screencast. Um, so, you know, pair program is exactly that. Two people working uh, at the same keyboard or at least sort of in the same code base at the same pro uh, time, um, trying to solve the same problem, right? So this isn't, so there's some things that pair program isn't. It isn't just, you know, observational where like one person's coding and the other person's just sort of looking at them and you know, being quiet. It's a conversation, there's back and forth. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in sort of a classic definition of pair programming, there are two roles. Each person has their own role. One person is the driver, and this is the person that has their hands on the keyboard. They are basically, uh, you know, they, they are putting the words into the computer. They're telling the computer uh, what to do. It's a very tactical role, right? Just as we all know, when we write code, you know, we're thinking about the syntax, we're thinking about the, 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 the names of things. Is everything going to compile? Um, uh, they're thinking about the code, and then uh, you're working on the next step of solving the problem. So one person in the pair is a driver, the other person is the navigator. So the navigator is thinking more strategically, right? You can think of this as, you know, if the driver is the hands, the navigator is the brains. The navigator is observing what happened, was happening and, um, and is, 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 is in conversation, right? In pair programming, there's a lot of talking. It's kind of an anti-pattern or a smell if a pair is silent. Um, because it pro you know, probably means that uh, one person is doing both the thinking and the typing. And the whole idea is that you put two brains on the problem because you get, you know, more, you get exponentially more um, a brain power when we combine uh, you know, two people thinking about a problem and talking about it in, in conversation. So uh, people take on these roles and an individual takes on one of these roles for several minutes. Um, it gets really tiring to be typing all the time. It's really tiring to also be sort of thinking strategically all the time. Um, and it helps uh, each person, each person in the pair, get a good understanding of the problem and of the solution, which then uh, you know, makes for, for better software uh, overall. So every few minutes, um, and we'll be timing uh, you know, ourselves. So like, I don't know, I think like seven minute, uh, seven minute rounds. Is that about right? Yeah, I think so. Maybe six minutes. Um, we'll switch positions. And, uh, and, and, and then, uh, you know, and each person gets to experience that. Um, also, uh, after every round of pair programming, um, it's a good idea to set aside, I mean, just a minute or two. To just say, hey, how's it going? And this is a time where you can say, wow, you know, that problem was really hard, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Or it's like, you know what, now I think about it, I'm not too happy with that solution. Should we do something different? Right? Um, it, it really helps uh, improve and it helps you go faster when you take a little bit of time to reflect on, on what your experiences are. Um, and so then uh, at the end of the, the time box, you have a little discussion and then you switch uh, places. And so a new driver picks up um, in this case, uh, because I'm guessing that, well, everybody's got a laptop and um, uh, if you want to share a keyboard with someone else, that's fine, but also it's perfectly fine to do bare programming, just touching your own keyboard. Um, uh, switch places, and the new driver picks up where the previous driver left off. So, you know, pull the latest changes. Uh, actually, the old driver, or the previous driver should push the changes up to GitHub. The new driver can pull uh, the changes in, and then you start uh, coding again. Um, the new driver should resist or you know, should try really hard to resist the temptation to like, just rewrite things the way that they think is right. right? That's not the idea here. Um, if there's something that you think should be written, that's the job of the navigator to say, hey, you know, um, can we have a better variable name there? Or, oh, hey, that method's getting kind of long. Can we break it up? Those kinds of things. Um, and, and again, in pair programming, the best results are achieved when a conversation happens, when uh, two people work together to develop the solution. So a couple more highlights about sort of the, the practice of pair programming. Um, there's a couple of patterns that uh, there have been uh, codified. So there's what's called strong style pairing, um, which is you know good when you've got two people that are at different levels. Maybe this is something that like when you pair with me will apply more often. Here there's someone that you know, to be honest, you know, has more knowledge of it. Um, and which, which gives them a unique responsibility both as a driver and as a navigator, right? So at the driver, when, uh, you know, when you're sitting there typing, you need to be extra verbal to explain and make sure that the, the navigator with the less experience, make sure that they understand really what's happening and why. That aids learning and also gives them an opportunity to ask the questions or actually gives them more context for the questions that they ask 
um, which uh, you know helps see a new uh, problem with a, a new set of eyes with someone who's you know more more new to it. Um, when the when the more expert person is the navigator, um, it's the, you know the onus on them is to um, find the right level of abstraction for the driver. You know, sometimes you know, I've paired with people, and hey, you know, they, uh, you know, it's a new language for them, or they're not familiar with the IDE tool. Okay, you know, then it can sometimes be yes, you know, type the word this, and oh yeah, put a colon. Sorry, a semicolon, right? You know, those kinds of conversations is perfectly okay. I mean, it's fit to purpose um, when you've got the strong style pairing where you have a, a knowledge differential between the two. Um, yeah, you know, one of my uh, favorite quotes from sort of the pairing, um, you know, literature in the pairing community is that when you're the navigator, um, in order for an idea to go from your head into the computer, it must go through the driver's hands, right? It is, you know, it's, it's a foul to like grab the keyboard away and start typing. No, I mean, the job of the navigator is to navigate. They don't, um, you know, their, their hands aren't on the wheel. And I know it can be frustrating, um, but it's, it's part of uh, understanding the role and it's part of effectively teaching someone, again, in the strong style. style. Um, another, another style, uh, you know, to take into consideration is ping pong pairing. And uh, this, is, this is often um, coupled with test-driven development in that, you know, one person, uh, the, the driver and the navigator, yes, there's still a driver and a navigator, but you focus on, hey, let's write the test first. Great, one person, you know, does that, and everybody agrees, oh, yeah, that's the test I want to write. And then you switch pairs, and then the other person um, is the, the driver who, uh, who implements the code to make the test pass. And the whole idea is that, you know, things ping pong. Uh, back in um, back, back and forth, um, and then you can also uh, you know as you find opportunities for refactoring. Yep, you can put that into the mix also. Um, and, and so then uh, I guess you know the reason that I I want to make sure that you understand these kind of techniques and why I go into so much detail about it in the lecture is that pair programming is just not two people sitting at the keyboard you know doing whatever. There is structure here that uh, that is really important, especially when you're getting started. And you know for me it was you know, the first few years of doing pairing and really thinking about these roles and what they mean and how I can be effective in that role um, in the context of my pair. Um, there's uh, really great, um, there's also great resources out here, two of my favorite ones, um, one from uh, Martin Fowler and the other one from Llewellyn Falco um, that you know, describe more about, uh, more about this stuff. Um, any questions about sort of like pair programming the techniques, anything left over from the lectures you want to discuss, anything here that's strange or foreign to you? Okay. A um, couple of words about remote pair programming, which we won't be doing tonight, but maybe in a couple of weeks we'll have an opportunity to do. Um, you know, you, you look at the original literature, this is before there was widespread use of video conferencing and you know, tools like uh, Zoom or Skype or anything like that. Um, and so it's all described as, yes, you know, people are literally sitting next to each other and sharing a keyboard um, and, and all of that. Um, but that's not always available, um, nor is it always optimal. So, uh, you know, ultimately, pair programming is about the conversation and the, the output that is produced from that conversation. So uh, there are a couple of techniques that have found to be effective for pair programming. Um, one is to, as I was saying before, when the driver is done with their turn, commit their code to, to, to Git, push it up to GitHub or whatever distributed version control system you're using. Um, and then that new driver you know, goes and immediately gets that latest code uh, into their own local environment. And of course, this is you know uh, very effective um, for remote pair programming when you know you're just seeing someone on a screen, you're not there in the same room. Um, there's also uh, IntelliJ also has a feature called Code with Me um, that allows you to uh, you know literally uh, have two people edit the same piece of code at the same time, like collaborative editing in uh, in like Google Docs or uh, or whatever. Um, it's uh, it's. It is pretty cool. It's uh, it works nice overall, um, and, uh, and and it really makes it just super fast to change a drivers and navigators. Right, there's a little bit of time doing the GitHub stuff and everything. And when you're you know, changing it for six minutes, you know, thirty seconds can count. And um, so uh, you know, however, um, 
And one of the anti-patterns I've seen is that with like code, with a tool like Code for Me, it becomes a free for all, right? You know, everybody, you know, both both partners are working independently and writing different code, and things don't compile, and no one's really talking. And ugh, that's not the goal here. So um, probably tonight, since we're all in person, let's not use Code with Me. Let's just go with GitHub. Um, again, we do remote pair programming, or certainly we do mob programming. It might be uh, a more effective option. So there's some notes there. So here again, I recommend that we uh, work with. Uh, with GitHub tonight. Now, the uh, the, the code that we're going to write um, uh, solves what are called code katas, um, and so a kata is uh, an exercise that comes from martial arts, um, where uh, you have a very simple practice um, that you often repeat, uh, you know, many times. Um, and, and so then, you know, the whole idea is that these are you know, very simple coding problems, uh, programming problems to, to solve. And uh, again, the lesson isn't in solving the problem. As a matter of fact, I don't really care if you solve Okada or not. That's not the goal. The goal is to experience a way of programming, like test driven development, or pair program, or refactoring. Um, we'll see Okada's throughout the course that help us explore those, uh, th th those programming techniques through programming, right? Not just an academic exercise, not just reading about it. Um, and, and just like the, the, the cones, you know, the goal is not to do it fast. It's not to get it all, oh, look, I got it done, yay. It's like, no, it's about to go at a pace that, at which you can learn and um, that, that the lessons, you know, take and you have an opportunity to explore the concepts that you're learning about. Um, so, you know, uh, again, you're learning about Java code, you're learning about using IntelliJ, you're learning about pair programming. That's really what you're going to do this Okay, so that's the, the preamble. Let's start uh, doing what we're going to do tonight. And the first thing is the FizzBuzz kata. So um, what we're going to do is, uh, I don't know, I call it an operating theater. So right, you know, think back to like maybe a doctor show or if any of you have, uh, you know, a personal history or, uh, you know, have known doctors. The way, you know, the way they teach uh, procedures, uh, or at least traditionally, is that there is like this literal, literal theater where the, uh, you know, the surgeon or the doctor or whatever um, is, is performing an operation, is you know, doing some doctoring stuff uh, you know, down there on stage, and there are all these students in the audience that are uh, watching this happen. Um, and it occurred to me, it's like, well, you know, the way the, the first pair programming exercise is a lot like that. Um, and so what I'm going to uh, ask you to do, and we're going to look for you know, five or six uh, you know, volunteers, five or six of you, which I guess is kind of most of you, um, to, uh, to pair with me. And uh, we'll, we'll look at strong style, we'll look at ping pong, we'll, we'll figure out how it works. And we'll be wor uh, working on a very simple kata called um, FizzBuzz. Um, and, and, and it's one to acknowledge that, you know, it's only week four of the class. And, uh, you know, as we talked about on day one, some people have uh, more experience with Java. They came in, of course, more experience with Java with others. Uh, again, the goal is to experience pair programming. It's not to, like, get everything done and get everything done perfectly. Um, and uh, just to be clear, hey, this is volunteering. Again, you know, right? This is kind of unusual. I'm guessing you haven't done this kind of thing in your other <coughs> courses. And so, if you're like, okay, I'm not feeling safe. I'm uh, not ready to do this. That is fine. Um, we will. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I think we'll have a good learning outcome regardless. So, um, thanks for being courageous. And so, here's how you sign up to uh, to to volunteer tonight. Um, if you go to if you go to the repository, actually go to in your checkout. If you look in the uh, the FizzBuzz project, uh, actually I can do this in IntelliJ too. It might make a little bit more sense. Here in IntelliJ, you go to FizzBuzz and there's a file called palm.xml. So there's like every project has one of these, but you'll know it's this one because down here in the developer section. There's a whole bunch of places for you to add your name. Um, and so if you'd like to sign up, please, uh, in your uh, local repository, um, choose which number of students you want to be. There might be a conflict, and we can always resolve that. It would be a fun GitHub exercise. And put your name here and uh, say whether or not you want to be a driver or a navigator uh, with your, uh, when you pair with me. Right? So you can be a driver or you can be a navigator. So uh, let's take a minute um, and let's see here. Uh, so please, if you haven't already, get a uh, make a clone of the 
uh, Portland State Java Kata's Winter 2024 uh, repository. And, you know, I will, you know, I didn't, well, there's a link from the, the, from the sheet. So please do that. Um, and meanwhile, I think I had someone to, to add. Maybe I don't. Yeah, not get a, no, I did not get a, uh, yeah. So can, so I, I, I want to make sure that everybody can push the repository and this is a, a way to test that out. Are my instructions clear? I can't, I can't tell. Please, yes, and then commit it to, uh, to GitHub. And actually, uh, John, did you accept the invitation? Did you find that? Cool, awesome, okay. Thanks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe that's everybody here tonight. Yeah. I'm sorry? Oh, you did, thank you, okay, cool. Thanks, Katie. Cool. Okay. So yeah, so you come minutes and do that. And meanwhile. Oh, it's like probably cool. Awesome. Okay. So this has been made some comments, actually, or some commits. Let's sign up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. There's like, oh, that's what you're saying. Okay. Well, that's okay. Nice, nice. Oh, yeah. And you're probably finding that as other people commit, you need to do a poll first, get their changes, merge them in. And if, if two people chose to be you know, the same number of students, there's going to be a conflict. You need to resolve it. This is kind of all we're going to do tonight, right? Okay, we've got everybody working on this repository at the same time. Um, and so then, uh, again, uh, let me know how it's going. And if anybody, yeah, it looks like more people are uh, yep, getting in there. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I'm going to uh, pull the changes down. See if we can up. Yes. Okay. How's it going for everybody? Anybody encountering anything that is surprising, doesn't make any sense? Yeah. You may have. Well, uh, right. Well, this is an important resolution. Thank you. Know, it's okay. It's all part of the lesson, right? You have a conflict. How do you resolve that conflict? Um, so let's see here. How can we do that? How can we figure that out? You can. Um, let's see here. What happens if we say annotate? So, then, so, does it, so, so actually, yeah, it's a good point. Right now, I see John as student one. I see Ben as student two. Uh, Nora is student eight. Thank you. Uh, did anybody? I don't know. Let's get to the strangers. Did any? Okay. Did anybody sign up and they don't see their name? There's Katie. Awesome. Sharon. Okay. Cool. Um. No, no, no judgment. Uh, did John end up writing, overwriting anybody else's, you know, student one? Was that, did that indeed happen? Just curious. Okay, that was okay. Nice. Nice what we got. Nice one. Okay. This will be good. Let's go with, oh, yeah, we got, okay, great. Yeah, lots of people. Super sweet. Okay. So thank you for doing all of that. Uh, make sure to then pull in the, the latest changes uh, so you can get all of that. Now let's talk about um, Okay, 
So uh, here's the here's the the, the cut of Fizz. Has anybody ever heard of this cut before Fizzbuzz? I don't know, a while back it was like, oh, that's what they're using. You know, program, go, go to the interviews or whatever. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and so then you know, the whole idea is that this kata is, uh, it has a very simple algorithm that you're meant to uh, implement using test-driven development to give you some experience um, in, in, in TDD. Um, and so, and this is the way I'd like to approach it. We'll, uh, you know, uh, with the pair, uh, we'll figure out which, uh, you know, what test to write, and then we'll uh, make that pass. And then we will, you know, and, it's, and, and then it's ready to in a factor. And so if there's any improvements in the code that we can make, we'll, uh, we'll do that. And again, the goal is to explore test room development. It's not just like implement this as, as quickly as possible because it's very simple. <laughs> Um, that's not the, not the goal. And so I'll go into the details of what FizzBuzz is all about. Well, yeah, I'll just do that. Now. So here's the, the detail of FizzBuzz. Um, here's like, okay, uh, here's like the, the description. So, so basically the whole idea is, is that you're, you're learning about uh, numbers that are divisible by other number, numbers. And so then uh, you say, hey, you're going to count. And every time that you get to a number that is divisible by three, instead of saying that number, you say fizz. And then whenever you get to a number that is divisible by five, you say buzz. And if you have a, uh, I mean, it's for bonus points, but if you have a number that is divisible by both three and 15, you say fizz buzz. Okay, it's kind of silly, but, uh, and you're probably all thinking, I know exactly how to implement that. And that's good, because you're smart people. Um, but that's not the goal here. The goal is to figure out how do I build up you know, tests? How do I do this with test driven development? Um, yeah, there's this whole thing here. So you can read over that too. Um, but yeah, so basically what you have to write is a program that prints the numbers one to 100 and uh, we'll say, you know, and we'll call out fizz and buzz when it's both. So, you know, one, two, and three, say fizz, and four, buzz, and six, fizz again, because I write six is divisible by three. Et cetera, et cetera, until you get to 15, and then it's divisible by both uh, 3 and 15, and so you say fizz buzz, et cetera, et cetera. You can go all the way up to 100. Um, and that's probably good enough for doing the pair program exercise tonight. I don't even know what the new requirements are. Um, oh, yeah. You can also just say, hey, if the digit 3 appears in it, so it isn't divisible by 3, so like 23, for instance, or 13 would be fizz because it has the, uh, the digit 3 in the number. Don't know if we'll get there or not. Might not need to. So uh, that, that says FizzBuzz sort of makes sense in terms of what we're doing here. This is by three, this is by five. Okay. This is also linked to in the, uh, in the handout if you want to dig into this one. Um, I'm sorry, I hope it's big enough for everybody. Um, So uh, we'll do, let's see here, seven minute Commodores? Yeah, let's do seven minutes. Okay. So uh, what we'll do here uh, very shortly, I'll invite John to come up here, um, bring his laptop, and we can, we can pair. Um, and what we'll do is uh, we'll have a series of uh, seven minute, um, what are called Pomodoros. There's a technique called Pomodoro where basically like you work for a little while. Right here, here. Up, up right here. You don't have to sit. Actually, it's probably better if we stand next to each other. Go couple doing so. I'll scoot over a little bit here. Um, we'll go through, and for seven minutes, uh, we will uh, we'll pair program. Um, let's see here. I okay, guess so, yeah. What we'll do is we'll uh, we'll do five minutes of, of pairing. So we'll implement you know, a test or two. Then we will have two minutes of reflection, and then we'll move on to the next volunteer. So um, and again, the we'll go in order in the uh, names that uh, appear. Uh, here in the uh, in pom.xml. Yes, so we'll get all that in. Okay. Any questions? Did I try? Okay. Cool. So let me um, get my timer going here because there's no way I'll take it. It's on five minutes. Okay. Oh, and sorry. Uh, let's see here. Um, John, you wanted to be the navigator. Okay. Cool. That means my hands are on the keyboard. Um, where do you think we should start? Uh, real quick. We gotta accept. Uh, a name as an argument with this book? I think so. Yeah, okay. makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So, probably start with the 
little shell of a method there. Go ahead. Okay. So yeah, well, let's write test first. So like, what's the what's the first test to make it make sense to write the phase space? Um, you just made an integer. Or did you pass it with a uh, uh, valid? So it should be less than 100, right? Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Okay. So then, yeah, so if, uh, okay, so like what's a, a good number to start out with then for the first test? You want to do a boundary test? Um, it's supposed to fail first, so it should be like 200. Okay, so let's see here. Um, uh, uh, number of, oh, huh. sorry, what should I name the test? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, number 200 is too big. Okay. okay, so then how do I implement this test? What do you, um, do you want to do? What, what, what do, do? I don't really want to say if int is, 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 okay. if the int is greater than the 100 fail, but first you instantiate the int, like in 200, you can get the 200. Okay. Uh, number equals 200. Okay, then we're going to do that number. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just check like, if number is greater than 200. Fail. Well, that's the implementation. We're working on a test right now. Okay. So, right, so what we're going is, so, so if, if I may, mm -hmm. um, uh, so probably what we want to do is we want to send that number 200 off to, like, yeah, the, the get to be implemented fizzbuzz function, oh, okay. right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, so what? So yeah, this was if I guess that the this was function would it would be a boolean and it would be false if it got a number of one. Ah, okay. Um, this was okay. So let's make a I will make a uh, something called this buzz here that takes the number two hundred. Yeah. Okay. And then let's see here. I'll play this and over there. I'm gonna do a split screen thing that I like to do. Let's see if I'm going to say split and then right. So over here I have on the left I have the code under test, and over here I have the, the code. Okay, and so then oh sorry, so wait, um, so when I call fizzbuzz with the number two hundred, what do I get? So, uh, so what happens? I I was thinking just return false and have to function return boolean value. Uh, yeah. But I, I think there might be a, a better way to do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. I mean, yeah, the fizz buzz. I mean, what is the what? What? what uh, tell me more about the the, the fizz buzz method and what you expect it to do. Um, it should take a number that's less than one hundred and then from zero to uh, that number, mm. it um, checks for fizz. Uh, excuse me. From Zero to hundred. If the number is divisible by the first digit of that number, then say fizz. If it's divisible by the second digit of that number, say buzz. Gotcha. Okay. So that's also uh, what well, you say. I mean, so what does it mean to say in in your in your mind? What do you mean to say? Well, I mean, you said okay. When you give it a number that's divisible by three, it says buzz. Uh, oh, like yeah. like how, how do you represent it, or rather, how should I test for that? Saying. Oh, it, you just uh, you probably just uh, mod it, mod it, and if the result of the mod is uh, greater than zero, then it fails. It doesn't say print to that. Or does it print to the ah, okay, there you go. Print, print to the command. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, so printing the command line, that's probably like a, a good integration test then. Uh, okay. Cool. Time. 43 seconds. Okay. Uh, well, we have this. Um, and so then, okay, this will, yeah, we can, we can implement it that way. I actually probably want to return true, so it will fail first. Mm -hmm. And then I had to implement it over here because otherwise it would compile. Mm -hmm. So then, you want it? Oh, it's taking a little while. It's the first time to build it. I actually built it before uh, we started this. Okay, expected to go. It fails right now because it's expected false, but it was true. Um, and then, so what do, you, what, what, what do you want to do to make this pass? Uh, you pass a number that's less than 100. So, the test okay. called number less than 100 is good. Okay, cool. Let's quick do that one. And then, uh, num well, uh, number 100, or number of 100, I like that. Right? 
One and then this is two. Or it should be worse than one hundred. Ah, thank you. Okay, so I guess uh, ninety-nine. I don't know what's the number. Ninety-nine. Yeah, ninety-nine. Is in the middle. It's so far. Okay. Great. And so then, well, this will pass for all the wrong reasons. Okay. Anyway, I'll let this run, and we can we can figure it out. Uh, but what do you think? So that was the five minutes of fair program. It was a lot harder than I thought. I never, I'm so kind of thinking about all these things that work. Yeah, but it didn't work. It is, isn't it, right? Because so often we program in our heads and it's so hard to get it out and to really think about it. That's actually, yeah, that's a good point. That's, uh, that's probably like the, the hidden skill that you end up developing with fair program. What, uh, what people uh, in, the, uh, in the operating theater, in the theater, uh, the patrons in the theater, uh, what, what, what did you observe? Uh, what were some of the things that you saw? Ah, playing session before we start. Okay, yeah, yeah. I I agree. I don't I don't even think that this might be the best way to go about this problem. About it. Okay. No, and that's okay. It's okay to explore for a little while. That's a good observation. It might inform what we should get from the next person. Um, what other observations do people have? Yeah, it's a good observation, right? You know, I, I, actually, I really enjoyed that exchange because I knew exactly what you meant when you said "say," but like as the driver, it's like all I do is code, and I didn't want to make an assumption what you meant about "saying" because it's like, oh, did it, does it return the string? Does it print the standard output? Like, what exactly would you want? And I think this is why I test from development because it really makes you focus on the you know the outputs that you get for a given input. Um, yeah, and, and being very specific. About it. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much, John. I appreciate you going first. Let's have a round of applause for uh, for John. It's not easy uh, being first. Uh, okay, so who is up next? That was John. Thank you very much. Uh, ben, Benjamin. Did you want to be a driver or a navigator? Okay. That's really cool. Okay. Well, let's see here. So here's where we're saying we've got this code now. Oh, let me turn the timer again. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, back, back the timer. Mm -hmm. that okay. This is what we got right now. Um, where do you want to start? Uh, I see tested for like an invalid thing. I think it'd be good to like test like the internet test for like the main functionality of like. Uh, if it's maybe divisible by three. So. Okay. Well, these tests aren't passing yet. I mean, well, we're not getting them passing. Yeah, because uh, okay. yeah. So we um, uh, okay. So then for uh, if the number is too big, we need to add a if statement. I think. Yeah. Um, so inside the first case, if uh, number is greater than one hundred, okay. um, we can. Okay, we're not throwing this up. An exception, which is good. Would it make more sense to you have to throw an exception? So or do yeah, we throw I, I would uh, throw an exception because uh, we, we don't really want to continue. Okay. So, okay. Well, so we'll just do that here, and yeah, so let's throw, throw an exception in all other Uh Do you have a particular favorite kind of exception? Uh, throw. Anything? I actually don't know. I would recommend, may, may recommend a uh, 2014 legal argument for example. There you go. There you go. Um, and then, uh, like, uh, yeah. should we leave a message? So oh, yeah, like, always good, yeah. Okay, so uh, argument to large, or number to large. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and then let's go back over to the top screen change it. So, yeah. um, I think we should go like an assert phrase. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, actually, I'm trying to see. Yeah, I'm trying to remember it too. Let's see here. Assertions is, yeah. Um, assert throws, and then, actually, what does it, it do? It takes, oh, yeah, you, you have the type of exception. 
that is my oops. This one's in blue, isn't it? Yeah, the margin is set free. Well, yeah, we probably should have written this first, but whatever. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and then what do you do? You pass it with an executable, which I think they usually pass in a lambda. Oh, yeah. Like this. Yeah, if I get that off the screen so everybody can see it. And now you don't need this equal default stuff anymore. Yes. I think that's the way syntax. So it's, what's it okay. saying here? It's saying that, oh, result of fizzbuzz is ignored. So do we still need to return anything? Um, we, Maybe not right now. No, it's in, no, no. Yeah. I think we need to do that. Okay. Uh, oh, that was, yeah. Okay, so we should we see the test ones? Yes, although this isn't compiling yet. And so I'm just going to remove this assert that to make sure it doesn't blow up. Nice. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's try to run that test. Yeah. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, it's still running. Stake all that okay. fast, and then so so we should try to yeah. catch your exception there, so it doesn't go into the circuits. Um. Well, no, it's probably not important to catch much in the in the test, oh, right? Because I mean, if, if, if an exception happens in the test. Oh, sweet. Up. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to get you after we call this Fizzbuzz function. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So we'll do that later. Yeah. Uh, and then, well, let's, let's, fix, let's get the other test. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had an idea from their test, but what was it? Oh, uh, another test. Let's do Fizz. OK. Uh, so um, it's simple, just like if number number divisible by well, three. Well, that's the implementation. That's the test for that. Right, this is the return at all, right? Yeah, so it's like, oh, like you want to like, uh, test the output, right? Right, right. so like, so uh, number divisible by three points is. So, like, number, this is your number three. Number three? Yeah. Um, prints, let's see here. Yeah, I can't capture standard out in a rare old unit test. But what we did the following, uh, if, I, if I may suggest. Um, what if fizzbuzz, oh, what if it just returns a string? I think okay. that'll make it easier to test. Oh, if, if, yeah. Right, this has just like a very simple responsibility. So, so yeah, so it's, it's more like, you know, number three returns fizz. Yeah, okay. Right? Yeah, so then, uh, so assert that, oops. Assert uh, that fizzbuzz is equal to Fizzbuzz of three. Yeah. Two, four, five, six, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I was complaining. Thank you very much. And it's complaining because, oh, yeah, I can't resolve the method because it doesn't require anything. So let's say string there. Okay. And then I managed to return all to compile. Watch it fail, right? It's always important to watch your test fail. Mm -hmm. That way you know your test is representing something valid because this is make thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Yep. Yeah, it's such a phase, but was no. Awesome. And that was your time box. Yeah. Uh, dragged on, went by the longest five minutes of your life. Uh, yeah. That's good. That's good. That's fun. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Well, so what are your, some of your observations? Yeah, what, what uh, you see there? I, Figure, I mean, I guess it's supposed to be like a conversation. Uh, I thought that was good. Mm. I don't know. It, it would probably help if that's more knowledgeable in the, the syntax. So we, I don't know. You, you remember to start throws. I, I always forget that one. It's like, hey, how does it work or anything? So, no, I thought that was good. Yeah. And then, like, should we be like telling me exactly what to type or just like kind of throwing ideas out? I, that's a good question. You know, I, I think. Uh, Again, because it's like because of the knowledge differential, it's probably you know that that strong type. Um, you know, for a strong what are we called? Strong style, strong style um, pairing. So uh, you know, sometimes yeah, you end up uh, you know the the, the the navigator sort of like has the vision and yep, all the driver's doing is typing uh, and stuff. But more often, yeah, it's that kind of conversation where oh yeah, I've got some ideas, I know some stuff. Oh, you got some ideas, you know some stuff. Let me reconcile and come to a good solution. Nice. Cool. All right. That's awesome. Uh, any uh, observations for, uh, for Ben?
Oh, you like throwing second solution? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. No, but you're learning more, right? And this is why we sort of do this together, right? So we can see how the code evolves and we can learn new things. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So who's up next in the chat, right? Yep. Oh, you want to drive? Good. Okay. Can you? Would you mind bringing your laptop? Are you on the Zoom? I think we, if you get on the Zoom, then we can share your screen that way. Yep. I, th I think that'll work best. Well, I guess we could. Yeah, that will be on the recording stuff too. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, if anybody else wants to drive, yeah, please get on the uh, on the Zoom. Okay, and, let, and I, meanwhile, I'll commit this so that you can get it. So let's see here. Load a couple of tests. Oh, I'll pass it. Yet. Let's see here. Nice. Okay. Oh, sorry about your product. You are. Oh, and, and, and please don't join the audio. Otherwise, you get like crazy feedback or anything like that. I think well, no, we don't really need to be on the microphone or whatever. Oh, yeah, that would do it. Yeah. There we go. If you wouldn't mind coming up here, and so. It's, it's a little less of an awkward conversation when we're like standing next to you. Okay. okay. I will. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, so let's see here. Where are we still in our tests? Um, I think we. Yeah, we just run all the tests. Um, do you know how to do that? Yes. Okay, awesome. All the tests. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so it's a, oh yeah, it's right, that was a number three returns fizz. Okay, so let's make that passing. Um, yeah, so yeah, go back in the implementation in the fizz buzz method. Now we need to uh, make it, um, Make it pass. And so let's see here. Um, well, let's just say, let, let's just uh, let us do the easiest thing, the simplest thing to possibly work, which is uh, if number equals equals three, then return um, is a couple of things. Yes. Okay. Yeah, let's run the test again. Oh no, no, yeah, yeah, what was it was it saying? It always asked me to install oh, one, but Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't think it's necessary. Then you're gonna compile, so it's from our test again. Oh, and you can also rerun the tests by using that uh rerun icon. Oh cool. One, one two. Awesome. Oh, oh yeah, thanks. Dark mode. Oh, it's small. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Would it, is it more readable if uh, it's a little bigger? There's, oh, that needs to be tiny. You get bonus you time. Okay, I don't know how to do that. Uh, I'm not sure either. Um, let's see here. What's the best way to do that? Okay, maybe control or uh, or, or uh, you're on a Mac. Yes, yeah, so maybe command scroll. Yeah, that, I think that'll work. Okay. Yeah, there might be other ways to do it, but that's good. I guess so it's um, command and then scroll. And yeah, sorry, two fingers. Uh, swipe. Maybe that's called. No. Okay. 
Probably a command plus. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry. Yeah, maybe others can experiment on uh, there to figure it out. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm not going to lose my Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. We got this one. So, okay. Let's. Um, so, the next thing I want to do. I mean, I know that implementation game is a little lame. So, let's write another test for another fizz, like six. So, yeah. Let's do. Uh, let's do that. Let's write um, number six. Yeah. Concept was the last one. Yeah. This six. So yeah. Or you can just copy and paste. Yeah, you know, no, no. Uh, yes. uh, well, actually, I was going to say six because we oh, haven't sorry. done the divisible yet, right? Well, so great. then, yeah, this will um, be the divisible. Uh, yes, that's the yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. And so then, yeah. So, uh, well, to to make this pass, we need to change that equals to uh, a percent of modulus, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's do that. Try. Oh, you know what? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you say modulus three equals equals zero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's equal zero. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So let me test again. Yeah, nice. Cool. And okay, now let's run all of them to make sure they also pass. Cool. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's do buzz next. Nice. Yeah, let's run it. Yep. Oh, yeah. I always like to see it fail, right? Because that way, if it passes, it means I misunderstood something about what's in there. It's a goal. This is good. Thanks for the buzz. It was well. Yep. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, let's do another if. I'm trying to think it should be an else, but. Uh, no, let's just do another if. So yeah, so if number is divisible by five, then it's in buzz. In programming, note note there. So this is me talking to the audience now. So note there, I didn't tell her exactly what to type. I just said, oh yeah, this is divisible by five, because I think she had figured out sort of how to express that divisible notion. Uh, so then again, this is one of the, you know, the, 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 the strong pair where, uh, like, I realize, like, oh, wait a second, I can be a little more abstract in my talking. Yeah, nice. I can't swear it again. Oh. Sweet. Okay. And then this one's better than I think it's ran the one. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yep. And right, because they're so cheap. Yeah, why not, right? I mean, it takes out little things. You got a nice fast one. Mine's super old. It's on three. <laughs> there you go. Right on. Uh, okay. Well, gosh. You know what? We, we uh, let's do another buzz. Like let's do ten. Um, I think this one was passing on its own. Yeah, yeah. we don't appreciate. Yeah. Yes. Right, yeah. So, I mean, this is good. What great yes. timing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, how about you commit this real quick? Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Well, you can take yourself out or. Yeah. You just want two turns, that's all. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so I will commit that as well. Cool. Uh, yeah. 
Oh no, it's two cups. Two cups. Sorry. Uh, this. Oh, this isn't the right one. This is the top level one. Oh, you want the one in? I don't know. I'm gonna apologize for. Um, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's that's probably it. Okay, that's too bad. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You used intelligent before. You seem very comfortable with. I struggled yeah. for a whole week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> learned the hard way. <laughs> That's always the only way to learn. Awesome. So, what, okay, what did you think? How are your five minutes? Oh, it was very fun, actually, because yeah. I'm so used to going by myself, which is just banging my head against the wall. So, it's better to actually listen to It's nice, right? You have something to bounce the ideas off of, and yeah, it's something to do. Um, so, what are some observations from the, uh, from the audience? Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. It was sort of got into that rhythm, and now, of course, we like built form was already there. <laughs> so yeah. you know, right? Yeah, that's good. That's uh, that's good. Awesome. Any other observations from folks? Oh, great! Thank you very much. Thanks, Sharon. Let's see here. Uh, yes. Oh, and so let me get those changes from Sharon. Katie, you're next. Oh, do you want to drive? So, yeah. Come on up. Awesome. Okay. Can I ask what device that is? Oh, nice, okay. Okay, you got any more of these changes in? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, let's see here. Okay, uh, you're, you're driving. Okay, so you're driving, I'm navigating again. <laughs> okay, um, well, it's like the next test. We haven't done anything with some little numbers. No. Nope. So, okay, let's do that then. So, uh, yeah, if you go to the, uh, the FizzBuzz test, Cool. Yeah, so let's yeah, write a test, which is, I guess, one, I guess. Yeah, number one returns one. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, the assert, now, I mean, feel free to copy and paste the yeah, assert from above, or yeah, let's do that. So, yeah, fizzbuzz dot fizzbuzz of one um, equal to, you know, the string one. Oops. Okay, so let's, yeah, that's what I'm going to see. Right. <laughs> oh, you put a space there for some yeah. Oh, you need a comma there. Oh, that is. Hey, welcome to pair programming in front of people, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Super sweet. Okay, so yeah, let's uh, run this test and see uh, see how we do. What? It's building. Yeah. Uh, it's oh, you got the changes. So probably just takes a minute just to do everything. Yeah. Yeah, just like we expected. That's good, right? Yeah. 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 When it, when it fails. Okay. So let's see here. How are we going to fix this? So, um, um, yep. Here. Yeah. You can probably replace that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nice. Hey, you, yeah, you sound like you have an idea. Right. Let me do... Oh, yeah. Okay. There you go. Is that? Okay. I think that'll work. Yeah. Is... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. See if that works. Yeah. Let's run the test again. Yes. So it's okay. Uh, let's run all the tests just to make sure they still pass. We didn't, yeah. I guess we didn't test anything for null. So yeah, it should be okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All the tests in the package. Yeah, that worked too. Nice. Okay. Well, let's see here. We've done one. We've done. Let me let's do two also just to make sure that yeah. it still works. Yeah, I mean, I suppose the way we put it. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you implemented it in a nice general way, which is good. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, knowing me, if I would implement it, it would have been like, oh, the number equals equals one. There's a turn one. Like, yeah, this is. I, th I think it's practical. I think we all understand uh, you know, that technique now. Yeah, so let's fund this. It's your best, right? Now, are you the kind of person that likes keyboard shark shortcuts? I am, yeah. but I'm not used yeah, to it. Yeah, day. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, yeah. I find it helps yourself to go faster. Yeah, encourage me. And you've been like, playing, playing comfortable. Okay, well, awesome. Okay, that would work too. Okay, gosh, what's next? So we've done one and two. Like fizz. Oh, let's do um, 15. Is it supposed to be fizz buzz? Yes. I'll do a fail. Yep. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, that's one of those. Okay. Okay. This is this was things. Okay. So back and look at the implementation and figure out what we need to do to get that working. So yeah, let's see here if it's okay. Yeah, sure, right? It's yeah. Equals equals yeah. So then, what do um, well, let's let's just get it working first of all. So. We could just say equal equal 15, that'd be lame. That'd be lame. <laughs> right, but we could say, oh, if it's divisible by three and divisible by five, then we're turning this Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's give that a try to scoot so you get something to, yeah, right, good. And yeah, I didn't say put it beforehand, but yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah, that's a good one. Cool. Yeah, so I'm going to test again. And you can run the test uh, down here in the bottom. Yeah, just by, by doing that. Let's save me a few clicks. Yeah. Okay, nice. Uh, let's go and test everybody again. Oops. Yeah, let's just go run all the tests again. And then. Uh... Well, wow. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Great. Awesome. Cool. Uh... Oh, you're going to commit now? Okay. Nice. Oh, what, what, what is this? This fork. is like fork. Okay. But I'm used to it. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, uh, no problem there. Nice. Okay, cool. Okay. Awesome. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, uh, well, and, and, and so then I, I think it's probably fair to say that it's like if you'd be up in front of people is, you know, it's pretty, it, it's a reason to be anxious. Um, but what did you think of this? I mean, was this is that? Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's kind of scary when you're professor, isn't it? Yeah, right. Yeah, no, don't worry, I get it. Um, all part of the exercise. Uh, uh, any any observations, feedback, or opportunity? Oh, tapping. Thank you very much. Awesome. Yeah, good deal. And we're coming along. She is. Um, who is next? Cameron. Awesome. Okay. Sorry. Oh, you want me to navigate her? Okay. Uh, good deal. Then okay, so I'll share my screen again. And I do this time. Time is fun. Time is fun. Um. Okay. So then, uh, I'm sharing my screen. See if there's anything I want to. Because it's Okay. So I'll get the latest code here. Okay. While I'm uh, let's see. I'll get the latest code, and I just want to um. Let's can see. I, here. Yeah, yeah. Can I go back and like change the previous stuff? Sure, totally. Yeah, yeah. So, I just want to make sure everything runs right now. Okay. Oops, let me take the time right now. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, change the previous tests. Oh, yeah, so what do you uh, so what do you recommend? So I kind of want to do like a boundary test on the number. Oh, ah, okay. I yeah. don't know if you can maybe mix the numbers, like have both tests and one test at the same time. Yeah. Where we test that uh, assert the rest for 101. Okay. Sure. And a uh, true 100. Hey, you know what? I think I'll just make another test. Why not? Yeah. Um, so it's 101. Because I think um, also for the for number 99. Yeah. Uh, that's not like the edge case. The edge case would be 100, right? Well, that's a good point. Is it? 
Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Yeah. So let's um. Yeah. Let's take a uh, hundred here, and hundred, and then one hundred one is too big. Okay. Yeah. So let's yeah. let's run this one. So yeah, it's very possible that the test that we wrote you know, wasn't the uh, didn't accurately represent the semantics. Nothing wrong with that. We learn. Okay. And yeah, that threw a number. So it's too big, and then hundred is okay. Yeah. So we'll run this. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was like you know up to one hundred. Okay, and that was that was okay too. Good. Okay, so our logic was good. I did that. Okay. Well, where do you want to go next? Um, let's look through the main program. Yeah. So this is what's actually loop, right? Well, uh, we need to have. Uh, it's. Uh, yeah, we need to have. Um, so loop from zero to the number, right? Yeah. Okay, so I think at the very top we want to keep it where it checks the boundary. I guess we should add another case where the number is negative. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, okay, so like, um, I guess. Copy one here. Yeah. Number less than zero. Or negative one. Number of, uh, yeah, I think it's a minus. Minus one is too small. small. And then, uh, yeah, that's the one test, okay. So now I'll run it. Yeah, all right. Nice, okay. So then in the main program, yeah. under the checking off there, it's greater than 100. Mm -hmm. Let's do if number is less than zero. Cool. I'll just copy paste the previous one. I'm using duplicate. Yeah, duplicate by the way, I guess. This one is less than zero. Less than zero, less than one. What's the. Is, is zero valid? I can't remember. I was assuming zero is valid. Okay. Yeah. So, so I guess. Okay. Oh, that's a good point. Um, Change the output to numbers too small. One. Because I think zero, I mean, zero is divisible by three, isn't it? I can't remember math. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah, so. so I would do zero, but I don't care. Okay, no. I don't care how That's right. You're, you're, you're navigating. It's, you know, it's, it's good to have you have yeah. videos. Maybe it'll be your turn next. Let's change the. Oh, thank the you. Throw. Yeah. Too small. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Um. Okay. Can I show you something about assert throws? Maybe you knew already. Sure. But assert throws um, actually returns the exception that was thrown. So you can do things like that. You can do some things like this. You can say uh, illegal argument exception ex equals assert throws. And you can say things like assert that uh, ex dot get message um, equal to uh, number is too small. Oh, okay, I see so. Yeah, I yeah I I'll, I'll do this like like especially when my exception contains some important piece of information like for instance we could like pass in the number or something like that. Right? You didn't want to. That's not fair. For the oh system. hey yeah good point yeah thanks well we'll see if that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah not really important but yeah it said oh yeah right expected yeah. were too small was too large and said but yeah <laughs> it's so great to have like a you know, partner who plays all the bugs that's fun. before I write them. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, assuming this passes, what's next? So let's add that same mistake to the uh, number of the small. Oh, okay. But change the output. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, where is the two? Oh, it's okay. Right. Um, so I'll say that we have an exception. Let's see what this one goes. And then I'll. It's too small. And I'll run it again. Yeah, run it again. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, it was fun. You like had a plan, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, and then we have when you're like the fourth person. It's just, it. yeah, just right. the first thing I noticed at the beginning. So. Yeah. But this, is, this is good, though, right? Add some more boundary checks, more some tests for it. Uh, good deal. Yeah. yeah. Well, what did you think? That's yeah, fine. It's kind of nice to tell someone what to do. <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, don't let the power go to your head.
but yeah, I mean, that's actually part of the value, right? Is that, you know, I'm sitting there typing, I'm worried about the syntax, and I'm sure I got to think of this. Yeah, it's sort of like, um, I think, yeah, that's, an, that's a sign of an effective navigator, right? Where the, yeah. the driver well, it's also easy because you're, it's more abstract at the beginning of this. True, yeah, we have more to work with. Yeah, yeah it's completely good. Point. Good point. Okay. Any other observations from the audience? Uh, yeah. Awesome, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, let's see here. There are some more people who signed up, and so uh, let's see here. I guess. Oh, Nora is. Yep. Yeah. Amanda, I saw you in the Zoom. Did you, did you want to come up? If you don't, that's fine. Okay, good. Awesome. Okay. And oh, I'm sorry, I didn't look. Do you want to drive or do you want to navigate? Yeah. You want to drive? Okay. Right Let's see here. Do you need to get the latest changes? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so let me start the timer. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm thinking I'm pretty good to go. So I uh, want to write an integration test and start working with standard help. Okay. Main method. Okay. So then, uh, yeah. Yep. Let's buzz IT. Sweet. Okay. Um, and so yeah, let's see. Here. I think our first test is oh, we can just do like fizz buzz of one prints out one. Yeah, nice. Okay, so let's see here. Yeah, okay. So you now get started with writing a uh, an integration test using uh, the, the framework that we used in the uh, and we want to pass in. Uh, actually, we want to pass in the string one, right? Because this is what you pass in on the command line. So let's say, yeah, you pass in the command line of, of one. Um, oh, what is it? Like? Oh, we need to give the name of the class. I'm sorry, you were probably doing that. I cut you off. I forgot about that. Yep. So it's yeah, fizzbuzz.class and uh, the, the, the string one. Uh, nope, I'm sorry, comma one and the string one. Yep, awesome. That's cool. Okay, and then we want to yeah, assert that the um, the result uh, contains strings, so comma can st contains string. Sorry, yeah, result, comma, contains string. Yep. Um, and then uh, the string one. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's why are things underlined? Oh, sorry, result dot get standard error or something like that. Yeah. The text written to standard error. There you go. Nice. Okay, let's run that. Cool. It said a string containing one, but missing the main line arguments. Okay. So then uh, let's go to our main method in FizzBuzz. And yeah, let's expand this. You know how to do that? There's a little plus over in that. Look at that. Okay, yeah. And um, oh, it's not a command line. You're checking. So let's just, yeah, let's just, uh, well, I mean, what do you need to do? System dot out to print line, things bugs of ours. Well, actually, yeah, yeah. this right. a print line. Um, yeah, fizz buzz of, uh, uh, we need to convert that string to an integer, so like integer dot parsent, capital I integer. Yep, and of args uh, sub zero. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, brackets zero. That's okay. And I think you want to delete that. Oh no, no, that's good. That's good. You can still have that line above it. Yeah. Okay, let's yeah, let's run it again. Oops. Oh ah uh, yes, that would do it. Yep. Yep. Nice. Okay. Um, and I guess now let's do two. And yeah, so that contains both one and strings one and two. Nice. One and two. Well, actually, fizzbuzz of two prints one, and two, right? So it's the, the input is two and it prints one and two. Yeah. Nice. 
Do we want to do this? Nope, the argument is two. No, I'm sorry. There's a single command line argument with the value of two. And then what we validate is that both one and two are written in standard out. So the whole idea is that the argument to the fizzbuzz function is what's passing in the command line. So here the argument to the fizzbuzz function is going to be two. So if you do that, it turns out two is, right? And then we, that's a valid line. And then let's just duplicate that line and say that it also yeah, contains two. Nice. Okay, yeah, I expected to see one, but it was just two, which makes sense. Um, because, yeah, what we've implemented is just printing out the fizz buzz. So I think this is where we need to do our loop. Okay. okay. And we need to loop from zero to 100. So uh, I'll just say that because I think you have a good idea of what needs to be done. So I'll let you uh, do that and I'll uh, watch over and give you feedback. And I think we want from 1 to 100, not 0 to 99. Thanks. Oops. I'll just finish. Now you're on a roll. OK. Um, well, and that will call FizzBuzz. We want to print out FizzBuzz. Nice, and I think on line 17, you don't need that part anyway. Sweet. Okay, that's fine. Oh, uh, yeah, if you want. Nice. Cool. Wow. Yeah, integration testing. Super easy. Fairly inconvenient. Awesome. What did you think? Um, yeah. Yeah? You know, it's really interesting, like how much faster things go after a couple of iterations. Like, we're all more familiar with the problem, and there's yeah, and if it was planned before, yeah, there's a solution already to work with. Oh, awesome! Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, okay, that was it. Like we got through it, and I think we know. Yeah, there's there's more tests that we could write, but we got through everybody. I think we uh, sort of know what's going on. So um, reflections. So you know, what what did you think? What did you observe? Uh, it's about the whole thing. Yeah. It's it's always up to interpretation, right? Um, and, and that's sort of like it's just true in general. Um, oh, Nora, please be sure to commit the code too. Um, especially these kinds. There's again, it's not a right answer; it's a learning experience. That's true with code too, right? When your projects. You know, uh, you can all have you know, a project that does exactly what it's supposed to. And sure, you know, at some point you're sort of arguing aesthetics or, or, or whatever. Um, it, it's, it's good to have variation in code. And, you know, we're all individuals and you put two people together, yet you're going to get a particular solution. So um, you can you know, sit there and argue the merits of various approaches to things, you know, variable names and, you know, how you structure your code and things like that. Yeah. You know, those are, those are all details and that can be. Fun and valuable sometimes, but you know the goal here is that we all got to see some. I hope you saw some more techniques for testing and development, um, and then you know observe the conversation that happens in paper. Thanks. Any other information you want to share? Sure. Okay, you all deserve a break. So uh, let's take ten minutes. Be back at eleven minutes. <laughs> I'm feeling generous at seven ten. Okay, cool. Huh. Welcome back uh, after a little break. Um, so, uh, we, in the first part of class, we got to um, you got to observe pair programming, um, and uh, what we're going to do next is I'm going to talk about sort of the expectations for your own um, pairing and uh, and mobbing in in the course, and then you'll have an opportunity to do some pair programming also with one of your fellow students. So, oh, look at this. It is very. Uh, I think wanted all fell on one page or something like that. So as you've been learning about, you know, you saw in the lecture, you, you watched in the lecture, as you saw tonight, um, 
you know, programming is not the solidarity pursuit that it once was. Um, I think, uh, you know, a lot of us even, you know, today think of the, you know, software developer as, you know, a person and or almost all the white male, uh, um, you know, who is, you know, sitting alone in their basement and they're turning out great code or, you know, eating Cheetos and or whatever, you know, pounding Mountain Dew. Um, and, uh, and, and that's really not the case, especially not for professional software uh, developers that, you know, that, that code for an organization that seeks to create something bigger than what one person can do is why we work together. Um, but the stereotype is out there and it has influenced um, how you know, we consider this profession of ours. Um, and a lot of problems came with this expectation that uh, of programming being a solitary pursuit. Um, you know, uh, an individual person can become uh, a bottleneck and can end up impeding um, others and those around them and just, just the overall throughput of, uh, of work. Um, knowledge often became very siloed, either, you know, intentionally or unintentionally. Because only one person is part uh, is, is aware of um, certain parts of the system, and um, oftentimes uh, those little micro decisions that we make all the time as coding that influence you know what we do um, are made suboptimally without the awareness of the of the greater system in terms of how, you know others that want to consume the code and interact with it, um, and so you know more mistakes, for lack of a better word, are are, are made. Um, this is changing though, um, changing very slowly, I might add. Um, but it, it is changing in that people see software engineering as a uh, team sport, as an activity in which you get the best results when multiple people all work together to uh, create something um, bigger than, than themselves. Um, and, and really, uh, you know, programming and pair programming, uh, you know, put this into practice in a way that, that we didn't really have before. Um, you know, people have been coming together since the beginning of, of, of coding. Um, but we didn't have sort of the practice, we didn't have the codification of you know, how do you effectively work together. And what I want you to experience in this class is, um, is doing this style of programming, working with someone else, first just one other person um, in pair programming, and then later in the course we'll experience mob programming or ensemble programming where um, you know, uh, several people get together to, uh, to work on a problem. So, uh, and, and, and the way we'll be doing this is again, working on these kados, these little, you know, easy problems that can be solved, you know, in an hour or so by two people. So um, for, uh, when you work with other people, we'll work in the, uh, the GitHub repository. And yeah, this is a public GitHub repository. Um, so uh, just remember that, you know, hey, the code you can write on your own, that's in the private repository. Um, the, uh, the code you can write with others in this class is in a public repository, just so it's easy to share. Um, and the katas themselves probably aren't noteworthy enough that you want to add to your portfolio, but they're going to be out there. I'll keep them around you know, for, for um, So uh, I, 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 as, as we saw before, I created the, uh, the repository there for everybody to work with. Um, and uh, the code with me is maybe something that we'll see um, uh, later on. Um, yeah. So, uh, so, so I want everybody to experience this, and so then what's the requirement, you know, what do we need to do? So thank you to everybody who came to class tonight to experience uh, pair programming in person. Um, each student is, uh, and so, so the whole idea is that not only you know, you're sitting here, but I'd like you to experiment with pair programming, to see what it's like to be the driver, to see what it's like to be the navigator. Um, and uh, let's see here, and, and uh, I want you to do this a total of four times. So. Uh, two, two, two that participate in two pair programming katas, and then also participate in two, um, in two mob programming katas. Um, so that's the participation requirement. Um, and so that means, uh, so you know, tonight, everybody's uh, doing it tonight. And then there'll be another opportunity to pair next week. Um, that will be uh, also in person. Um, and then the third, uh, then the third week, um, uh, I'll open it up for a remote pairing. And that's something that you want to experience, or it's like, hey, next week you're not pair programming, but you, you want to do it again and you want to do it remotely, that's an option. Um, because, you know, remote pair programming is completely valid, right? It, it's, it's, a way to, um, uh, it's a way to pair, um, and I want to give you the opportunity to experience. I think it's best to learn first in person. We're going to have a very rich interaction, and you're not like messing with Zoom or 
you know, things like that. Um, so anyway, so uh, next week uh, we'll be back here in, uh, in the classroom. Uh, and then after that, uh, we'll be in the classroom or remote uh, if you'd like. And we'll have remote, well, actually, I, I don't know. We'll figure out if you want to have, you know, someone here who's pairing remotely with someone out, out of the classroom or not. Um, I'll, I'll let you up to you. And as far as the pairing goes, you only per se in two out of three. So if you just want to do it again next week, get it over with, and then, um, you know, take a second half a class a week after next off, that's not a good thing. And we'll do a similar thing with mod programming where the first two will be in person. Um, the first, and I recommend that you actually, actually please try to attend the first session of mob programming so you can experience a mob. And uh, that'll be interesting with this many students. We'll probably just do two mobs. Um, and uh, and then uh, again, you'll have an option to do it uh, in person again uh, second uh, second time. And then the third, it'll be uh, in person only. Um, and so that's the participation requirements. Um, additionally, uh, I'd like uh, for both mob programming and pair programming, there's a quiz on Canvas which asks you to reflect on your experiences. Um, to be clear, I'm not going to assess your the code that you write in the pair and the mob. That, again, this, that's not the goal of this. Um, I assess the code that you write in your projects. Um, so then, uh, you know, don't feel, don't, don't be concerned if you don't complete the kata or hey, if you're in a mob, it's a complete disaster. Um, it's all about the learning experience. So what I do assess though, is your observations and your reflections on the learning that you did have. And so then um, each of these uh, quizzes on D2L have some short answer questions. Um, so the first one is like, who did you pair or mob with? Um, so you at least be paying attention enough to know who you worked with. Um, and then uh, also uh, is going to ask for, well, I, I actually don't think it asks for, since we're all in the same cause kind of thing, I can just go and look to see how much you committed. I, I, I want to make sure you, you know, have some evidence of participation. But here again, it's not, you know, the code has to compile or, you know, the tests don't have to pass or whatever. What's most important is that you, um, you know, is that you learn things. And so then you're going to have to describe your experience pairing and mobbing, sort of like what you, you know, observed, um, what, what you learned, and then also uh, do some critical thinking about where pairing and or mobbing, depending on which quiz it is, um, would be effective and ineffective. Um, so anyway, this is how you'll be assessed on, on these experiences. So when you have these experiences, I want you to demonstrate that you participated by you know, committing to a repository. Um, and, uh, but then what you'll be assessed on is your reflections, what you observed, and some critical thinking about it. And just to emphasize one more time, pair mob programming for the katas. That's, that's exactly what you should be doing. Your project assignments, that is individual work. Um, so, as I think I might have mentioned in week one, one time I had some students who I caught plagiarizing from each other and like, oh, we thought we could work in pairs. Nope, not on the projects, on the codice. And the, um, as far as when the reflections are due, they are due, I believe it's a week after the final, you know, the final pairing, the final mobbing. So, sorry, where is it? Uh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. So, for instance, February fourteenth will be the final pairing session, and then the week after that, the reflections will be. However, you can submit them any time after next week. After you've done both, uh, well, you know, you've done both of your pairings, then feel free to submit the reflection while the experience is still fresh in your mind. That was easy about that. Any questions on the expectations in terms of your participation and the assessment of your experience with your pairing that program? Cool. Okay, I'm returning to the handout again. Um, now it's time for you all to pair. Um, you've paired with me, uh, and uh, I will. I sure might start creating a project, or at least making sure that everybody's compiles and stuff. So, you know, that's probably a good thing for me to do. Um, so, uh, let's see here. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we already talked about the uh, the, uh, the programming in this course handout. Now um, let's do a uh, well. Where you will all do um, another kata. This is the leap years kata. Um, again, super simple. Um, really, just implementing some logic. And again, the goal is to experience pair programming, do some test driven development, um, 
it's uh, sorry, you can just write it and you know, but you can demonstrate that it works. And I want you to learn from the experience. So um, here is a description of the kata. Basically, what you need to do is uh, you take in a year as a number and figure out whether or not it's a leap year by sort of like the normal rules. Um, so, uh, you know, here again, all years visible by 400 are leap years, so like 2000 was. Um, if it's visible by 100 but not 400, uh, then it's uh, not a leap year, so like, you know, 1900 was not, uh, 2100 will not be. Otherwise, all years visible by four are, uh, well, sorry, by four, but not 100, are leap years. So uh, all those years were, and then if it's not visible by four, it's not. Um, and actually, it's kind of nice to give you examples. You can just turn those into tests if you want. Um, so uh, you know, feel free if uh, you know, to read over, like, learn all this about the Gregorian calendar. That's neat. Um, but really, what we're here to do is to implement this. And again, what's going to encourage you to uh, leverage test driven development. Um, it will be assessed. It's really about working with your partner and um, and coming up with a with a great solution. I'm sorry, coming up with a great experience uh, by building a solution. Um. So you know, feel free to pair up. Uh, we have seven people here, so it'll be a trio. Also, nothing wrong with that. Um. And uh, let's see here. Do you want me to time keep, or do you want to time keep individually? I can time keep. Actually, I, I want to, how would I do that? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll just do it. And we'll do, um, let's do uh, 10 minutes. Um, yeah, let's do 10 minute Pomodoros. So uh, it'll be seven minutes of, of coding. And so please identify who's the first driver, who's the first navigator, and, uh, and go from there. Oh, and by the way, um, well, actually, we only need to figure out which rooms, which room number we're going with. Um, so, uh, oh yeah, and um, uh, but at the end of the Pomodoro, um, please make sure your code compiles before pushing it up to uh, to GitHub. Um, otherwise, if someone, because we're all in one repository, and so you pull down someone else's code and doesn't compile, then the IntelliJ project won't compile if you go to build your your, your tests and stuff like that. So just you know, work in small chunks. Make sure that the code uh, continues to compile. Um, and then, so we'll do seven minutes of coding, two minutes of reflection, and then switch roles, do the GitHub stuff, and then we'll uh, start over again. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, we'll go with probably, yeah, like, you know, six rounds of that. Yeah. And then we'll sort of see where we stand. Um, and, uh, we, you know, we, we might pause for a, a longer retrospective, like a five minute retrospective along the way. But what we'll end with is, um, a, uh, each room will um, capture some observations of their own in terms of this pair programming experience, you know, what worked well, what didn't work well, ideas for the future, um, so that we can call this pair. Um, uh, did you see, and of course, it's also fair game for your, uh, for the reflection too. Well, that makes sense. Cool. I mean, it's interactive. I'm here for questions and stuff like that. Um, so, okay, uh, let's see here. Let's form pairs in a trio. Uh, let yourself organize. Oh, right there. Great. Yeah, pair number one. So, um, yeah, actually, I forgot to mention. Here in the IntelliJ project, you all probably found it, but there are um, there is the leap years uh, projects, and I had five of them uh, in case there were five pairs. So see, you'll be pair one, okay, and then you'll be pair two, okay. Oh yeah, and uh, feel free to put your um, there is a uh, a place for your developers if you want to put in your um, your your name, uh, you know, to sign your work, whatever. Uh, and so then, the tri oh great, the trio will be pair three. That'll work. Yeah. So I'll just give you a couple minutes to get started and then we'll do the Pomodoro's. Yeah. I'll pause the recording this problem. So I'll put okay. So, this was, uh, I heard a lot of great conversations. It was a good thing for pair programming. We saw some 
uh, interesting backs and forth um, during the, uh, the, 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 the the sort of integration and learning here uh, in this uh, discussion at the last step here. Um, and so uh, I, I like, you know, I think I'll read the words, but I kind of like to hear in, in your own words what your observations were. Um, so starting with pair one, so, you know, uh, reflecting back on tonight and, and what you what you did, uh, what do you think about pair programming? And so you know, anything here you'd like to speak to or highlight for everybody? Hmm. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. So, like, when yeah, yeah, like one person's environment, when one of, one of the environments doesn't work, to do a block. That's, that's an interesting observation. Yep. Yeah, 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 it's on the benefits of the roles, right? It is. You, know, you are focused, so yeah, the driver is just thinking about code and everything like that, and then somebody needs to go look it up. That's a navigator's job. Nice. So, uh, pair two. What were some of your, what were some of the things that you noticed? And uh, maybe it's all your stuff down here, right? Yep. Yeah, so like, what are, what are some of the highlights for you or some of the things that you are, you know, ponder for your choice? Yeah, you stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah. I noticed. You said, yeah, you were talking about that a lot. So, 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 like, what were some challenges of like staying in your lane or staying in, in the role, and, and what, what was it like and how did you resolve it? Um, I don't think it was a problem. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it works on it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah, it's great. You know, sketch things out or to brainstorm test cases or anything related to it. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Good. That was fun. Now, uh, pair or rather trio number three. Uh, I'm really curious to hear about your experiences. You called out some things that might have been unique about your situation. Uh, yeah, which we all know if we find ourselves in a in a in a trio next uh, next week. Right. Okay, yeah, so probably took a little while to get three people sort of all in agreement or in alignment on like how to pursue it, but once you did, then yeah, things have flowed nicely. Great. What's your mother's experience in the in the trio? Cool. Okay. Yeah, it's a really good observation because uh, 
especially yeah, someone you haven't worked with before. Well, it's, it's like uh, their accent or how they put together their words or, or, or whatever. And I think that's an important thing to reconcile over time because yeah, it can be really jarring you're playing a piece of code and you're like, you know, you have to like parse it's like, oh, so you're used to a space being there, or it's like, oh, you put your braces on the next line. Okay, fine, you're right. It's, it's you're right. Yeah, okay, you guys do that too, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's legitimate to acknowledge and discuss those differences. And sometimes it makes, you know, the right thing to do is like, okay, uh, I'm not going to, you know, go with my preferred cell. I'll go with what my you know, partner is because it's better for both of us. Um, I think, and, and then when, you know, a few more weeks we're doing uh, ensemble programming, I think it'd be even more amplified. Um, but hopefully we'll have an opportunity to work with more people in the language. So it's great. Well, awesome. So that was great learning tonight. I, I really appreciate you doing this. I appreciate you coming downtown and, uh, and doing this in person. Um, I think it's important to, like I said, experience this uh, in real time the, uh, the first time. And uh, uh, you'll have a couple more opportunities to do it. Well, you'll, you'll, you'll have two more opportunities, and I ask that you uh, uh, participate in, in one of them. Great. Okay. Um, any other final thoughts on pair programming for tonight? Great. Got one more thing to cover, and I think I do want to cover it tonight, and that is Project 4. Okay. I know you just finished Project 1, and I know that maybe most of you haven't started on Project 2 yet, and that's fine. Um, I'm a firm believer in, oh, and I think this is what you did correct, you did the 21st? No, it's 28th, I need to fix that. Um, okay, Project 4, okay, so then. Project one, writing basic classes. Project two, writing uh, your objects, your, your appointment book to disk uh, as a file and reading it back. Project three, learning more about date formatting and sorting and things like that. Project four um, is, uh, is, is a lot like project two, except that now you're storing your appointment book um, as, uh, as XML. Um, and let's see here. Uh, you know, hopefully you had an opportunity to watch the XML lecture. If not, uh, if you do it you know, before you uh, you embark on this. So the, the whole idea is, uh, I, I hope most of you have seen XML before. It's a markup language. You basically have tags that, that provide structure to data. Um, and th there's a couple of interesting, uh, there's a couple of lessons I want you to take away from this. The, the first is that by using XML, all of our, we can now all persist and share our appointment books using a common format, right? For project two, when you write your own text file format, um, everybody's is gonna be different, right? And so you can't interchange them, right? You can't use one person or another. But project four, in addition to the text file, we'll also have an XML format for the, uh, for the appointment book, which will then give us a common format so that we can um, uh, exchange data that way. Additionally, there's also an API for working with, uh, with Excel called the Document Object Model, the DOM API, which is object-based. So now you're dealing with structured data read in from uh, a file um, as objects. And that's another part of, you know, object-oriented programming that uh, I'd like you to experience is using uh, sort of you know, a rich API, um, although a bit clunky in all places, um, for, uh, for working with uh, XML. So, some new code that you'll need to write for project four. So in project two, uh, you know what, I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop it here. Does this make any sense now? I, you know what, I'm, like, nah, you know, I'm not gonna introduce this now because you haven't done project two. Let's talk about this next week. Because, right, yeah, okay, right, I, I think I'm sort of like, I, I'm listening, it's like, no, they haven't done anything yet, okay. Never mind. Uh, it'll still be due on the 28th. If anyone wants to start earlier or whatever, it's out there now. I'm going to move it to, uh, uh, we'll talk about it next week because I'm sure you're full. And after doing project two, which is due next week, I think that having the context for XML will make a lot more sense. So then, okay, awesome. Thank you once again for coming in tonight. Next week, more pair programming in person. If you want to show up in person and do some more pair programming, great. Um, we'll also talk about continuous integration. So uh, there will be a uh, more of a discussion, uh, lecture-y, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, demonstration part of class. So we'll do that. We'll talk about um, Project 4, and then we'll spend the uh, second half of class, or the second part of class next week, doing another Kata.
But until then, I hope you have a great week. Uh, stay warm and dry. Um, as you continue to work on your projects on the uh, on the Cohen's, on the um, um, projects two and three, um, please let me know if you have any questions. I'll be on Slack. And if you want to um, have some office hours sometime, let me know. I'm uh, pretty available this weekend. Okay. So yeah, awesome. Have a great night, everybody. Yeah, I totally forgot to do uh, place, place oh, you send me a, yeah, send me a, uh, I'm going to stop the recording. Stop.